Alright, what's up guys, you're watching Link's Plays again, and today I'm showing you how you can make your own YouTube banner that is going to look pretty good using Adobe Photoshop CC. This can even be the trial, which is what I'm using right now, if you can't afford the actual full Photoshop. So what you're going to want to do first is get a template, which has pretty much all the dimensions for your banner. As you can see, I'll open it up real quick. Alright, so as you can see, this up here in the corner says TV, which this whole banner, like this banner as a whole is what you would see on the TV. So don't put every single thing in there. The main area is, let me highlight it real quick. The main area is, see where it says desktop max? This is the main area that you're going to put most of your design elements in this area. So hold on, let me step back. Alright, so what I recommend doing first is getting a wallpaper for whatever game you play the most on your channel, if you're a gaming channel. Or a wallpaper that is somehow related to your content, so let me get that real quick. Alright, so let's say I'm a channel that is focused on Surgeon Simulator, so I have a wallpaper of this game right here. So you're going to want to take the move tool, so you're going to want to take the move tool and drag it over to banner template and drop it here. And drag it to the corner, now you're going to click edit and go to transform and go to scale and drag it so it covers the whole thing and then now you're probably thinking well I can't even see the freaking template thing in the background so what you're gonna do here is lower the opacity in this corner I'd say like 40% actually no 20% is good so now you can still see where it says desktop max because now what you're gonna want to do is get the rectangle tool and choose whatever color you want I'm probably gonna go with, uh, I'll go with blue this time. And go right in the corner, so hold on, I, I gotta get close to the screen to be able to see this. So you're gonna wanna drag it all the way to the other side until you get, see that pink line in the center? And, yep, yeah, once you get them both like that, then that's when you know it's dead center of the photo. So, now, you now that you've got that, you really don't need the template anymore so you can just delete that layer and you're gonna wanna increase the opacity of the wallpaper again and lower the opacity of the rectangle that you just made so now it's starting to kinda look like a banner what you're gonna gonna do oh my god I can't talk right now what you're gonna wanna do now is get the text tool and choose whatever font you want I'm just using grilled cheese btn right now and I'd say for the font, usually 300 to 400 is good for banners. I, well, I recommend using white for the text color, but you don't have to do that. And do not click on the rectangle when you're placing the text. You need to click somewhere over here. And then type in the text. Well, I'm going to type links. Actually, no. Test banner. Alright, so now we got that text. And see, as you can see... It, uh, it, it really does not seem that big, but you have to take into account that, again, the only part that people are going to see is that blue banner. So you need to go back into edit, and then transform and scale, and make sure you that you hold shift when you do this, or else the, what is it called, the dimensions will be off, and go down. Until it's a reasonable size, then drag it to the center, And that looks like a pretty good size. So now you're going to right click the text layer, go to blending options, add stroke. Stroke is like a line that's on the outside of the text. As you can see here, I'm going to do a, go with a decent stroke. And then I recommend having a, you can actually change the color of that too. I recommend having inner shadow and drop shadow and stroke because it gives the text kind of a 3D effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the stroke actually. I'm going to change it to... Alright, I decided that I'd just stick with black because it looked better. So now what you're going to do with the inner shadow is get whatever color you want. It really does not matter that much because it's not too visible but it is still kind of visible. I'd say choose a lighter version of whatever color the banner is. So now you can see it has kind of a 3D effect. And also, what I'm going to show you guys, this this is pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. Go to save as and make sure when you're saving it, save it as test 
banner. You're gonna save it as whatever you want to, but instead of saving it as a PSD, what you're gonna want to save it as is a JPEG so that you can actually upload it to your channel. And then the quality maximum and the number 12, matte none, baseline standard, click OK. So now I've saved that. And what some people like to do, they like to have a tagline under the text. So what you're gonna do for that is, oh my god, I can't talk. What you're gonna do for that is go here and you're gonna type something here. You're gonna pretty much do the same thing that you did before. And go to transform again, scale. All right, so once you have this extra text at the bottom, what you're gonna do is go back to blending options and when you click stroke, inner shadow, and drop shadow, it should mimic what is on the other text so that it totally matches it. So now that you have that and this last part is gonna be slightly advanced, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a character from a wallpaper with using the magnetic lasso tool. So let me just get a wallpaper real quick. All right, so now we've got our wallpaper open with this character. So what you're gonna do is go to the third tool down, which I'm pretty sure it'll show up as a lasso tool, but you need to right click it and then click magnetic lasso. So you really need to have a steady hand for this. So be careful, you can't try to rush it or else it'll turn out like crap. So what you do is start at the bottom and just slowly move your mouse along the edge of the character that you're trying to cut out. And sometimes you may need to click to make it um, to make it even more of a fine selection. But I have the frequency to 100, and what that means is if you can see, I'll probably zoom in on it in the video. You can see the, all those little dots that are showing up where I am selecting. Those are what the frequency determines how often those show up, and it pretty much just makes the selection either more sharp or like less accurate and I'm doing this kinda quick but when you guys do this you'll have all the time in the world so right, so I'm back on the bottom again you gotta be kinda careful to make sure that the lasso doesn't go up too much automatically cause that is why it's called the magnetic lasso because it likes to automatically cling on to things so once you've got your selection done you get the move tool again click the guy drag it over to banner template again or whatever you have your banner saved as and now you've got this character, you can drag it wherever you want. If you want to, you can use the edit and transform and scale to make it smaller. But just remember that this blue area is the main part that people are going to see on their desktop. So you wouldn't want to have the character like down here and be like, oh, oh wow, I'm a Battlefield channel, so that's going to be there. That wouldn't really make sense because no one's going to be able to see that unless they're uh, on a game console or something. Alright, so thank you guys for watching this video, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure you leave a like, and also I upload daily gaming commentaries, well aside from this, I am kind of new to tutorials, I don't really do tutorials that much, but if you want to see more, I will do them for you, so thank you guys for watching, and peace, links out.